Hi guys, welcome back to the Geek and Hermit. Uh, today I want to do a quick video on Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Now, I will straight away at the beginning of this video say I bought this two months ago and I've played it pretty much non-stop exclusively for that time and it is now up there in one of my top three favourite games of all time. The other two being Final Fantasy VII and Metal Gear Solid. So that's kind of to me how much I love this game. So I'll try and be as unbiased as possible, but obviously I love the game, so you know straight from the off where it's going to be. Now I'm going to have to talk fast and try and cut this short, because this game is massive and there's a lot to talk about. Now, this is played on the PC at medium to max, uh, medium to high settings, purely because my rig is kind of old now. It can run it okay, but as soon as you get to the high end stuff, you can see how pretty it looks on medium to high settings, so God knows what it looks like on maximum settings. It's just absolutely jaw-dropping, some of the scenery on this game. Now, straight from the off, I'm going to start off with the negatives that I've seen online. Two of the main things that are kind of people moan about in this game is A, the game is too big, the world map is gigantic, and it's kind of bloated, and B, a lot of people didn't like the RPG elements in the game, and feel like it should have stayed more of an action-orientated game. Now, firstly, yes, the game is absolutely massive. Um, the world map is absolutely gigantic. It just takes, I mean, good God, if you sail around it, it takes ages. Um, on the flip side of that, though, to actually just do the main story content, you don't actually even need to go half the islands. There's still some islands I've not even been to. It's purely if you just want to go and explore, find quests and all that lot, and get gear. Um, B... Uh, I can kind of understand where people moan that if you're not into RPGs, there is a lot of RPG elements in this. Uh, I'd go so far, really. I kind of prefer the game if it dropped the Assassin's Creed prefix and just called the game Odyssey and released it. Purely because it's it's a proper full RPG to me. Uh, you you get experience, you do quests, you level up, you get gear, you get action points that you can then unlock new abilities with. It's just an RPG. Um, and yeah, um, even early on, you get introduced to the fact that some of the quests have consequences depends, depending on how you perform in certain missions or choices you make. good example of this is very early on, you get the option on the first starting island, uh, a crazy ass priest is going to kill a family, and he reckons they've got some kind of disease or plague sort of thing, and you can choose to either side with the priest, side with the family, or just leave it alone and not get involved at all. Of course, me, I was trying to play like the paragon, the good guy. I thought, right, oh, I'll step in, save the family, kill the priest. Uh, and great. Uh, turns out a few hours later on, slight spoilers if you want to skip this bit, so just mute this next 20 seconds. Uh, turns out that he actually did have the plague, and it's actually a few hours later on you find out this. Uh, most of the island actually got wiped out because of it. You come back later on, and there's just dead bodies everywhere, being mass burned, and all sorts. And I googled that and it actually turns out that, a little bit of history accidentally, it turns out that the plague did actually ravage Greece around the time this happened. So I think it is that plague. Obviously I didn't know that going into this, so it was just completely... I, I think that was brilliant, just this pure consequences early on happening. And it's all the way peppered throughout the game, that how you choose with this, that and the other, and certain things will happen or not happen, depending. It's absolutely brilliant. I think the only downsides are, you're going to have a lot of RPG geeks that have just not played Assassin's Creed and feel like it's probably maybe too late to jump on the bandwagon. I think Jesus has got like 20 games before this you've got to play. It's completely standalone. This is set before anything else. It doesn't matter if you don't know a thing about Assassin's Creed. And also, really the actual main plot is a good 40 hour chunk, 50 hours maybe before I finished it. The actual main crux of the game, playing as Alexandra trying to sort out trying to find your family, find out what happened, and actually sorting out ancient Greece and this, that and the other. Uh, the Assassin's Creed part is not I mentioned really at all. You get one tiny it. section in the modern world, and that's it. It's not really mentioned again, with all the crap with the magical ancient powers and this, that and the other. It's kind of completely left alone for that, so you can play the main story on its own and not know a bleeding thing about it, and it doesn't get too crazy. With the DLC, it starts getting introduced. And actually going more in depth. If you want to just play the main story as her with a revenge story, you can do, and it doesn't go into the whole Assassin's Creed thing at all. Um, another feature with this game is the mercenary system, which kind of feels like it's been pulled from Shadow of Mordor or Shadow of War, where NPCs will randomly generate. You can hunt them down, like the mercenaries will hunt you if you get caught stealing, murdering, and whatnot. 
and they show up at the worst bleeding times. It's kind of like the crime system in GTA where the more you kill, the more you get seen. You have like a, a rating system and as soon as you get up to like a 5 rating you get every bleeding mercenary on the planet coming after you. It's a good system. I think just by the end I was sick of it. Because you can guarantee when you're trying to take over a fort or something, kill loads of people, you're never going to get seen and all hell's going to break loose. But then you get three or four of these goddamn mercenaries that just come out of nowhere with the flaming sword. It's a good fun fight. And then you kill him. Then his mate shows up. Then you kill him. Then his mate shows up. It's like, I won't swear. So yes, after about 50 hours I got a bit sick of that. Um, but yes, another thing I want to talk about is the quests, actually. I mean, actually to do the main game as well, as all the DLC and everything, it's easily over 100 hours I've got on it. Plus the DLC I skipped practically all the side quests, I just focused on the main ones, and that was easily over 100 hours. So if you did all the side quests on it, you easily get hundreds of hours. And again, another thing you can do on this, you can also create your own quests. There's a quest designer on it. You can also download other people's quests that they've made. Um, to be honest, a lot of them are kind of crap, but it does do recommended ones that have got high ratings that you can do. Um, a lot of them are pretty much just experience grinds. I've seen people moan about that, where it gates off certain main storylines at certain levels. But to be honest, if you do the odd bit of side content, I found it easy to keep up with the levels anyway. Never had to go away and grind. So I think it's people that just want to just do the main story and that's it. Uh, but yeah, I think it's definitely it's amazing, this game. It starts off quite grounded. You start off on an island, just pretty much with a sword and a loincloth, practically. And by the end of the thing, you're killing gods, pretty much. So the main standalone game, about 50, 60 hours maybe sort of thing to do the revenge storyline. Then there's all these cultists that you can hunt down, which I really loved. You can find dotted about the world different clues to hunt down cultists. It's kind of like a very early kind of form of the Templars. And they're kind of like behind the scenes interfering with everything. You can completely clear the game, the standard bit, without doing any of that. So you get one end ending after you do the revenge. Then if you go around hunting all the cultists, you'll see the spider web thing, and you have to kill all of them to get the uncover the middle one, see who's like the mastermind behind it all. <coughs> Pardon me. And then when you do that, actually hunt down the middle one, you get yet another ending. Which is I found that then starts getting into the more Assassin's Greedy kind of stuff. The first DLC is um oh god, what's it even called? It's like the first blade or something it's called and just three parts to that which delves into I can't explain too many parts of it without spoiling anything but kind of like the first very first assassin and how that stems where it stems from and two really um, no, that actually it's alright but it's set in the main world it's just extra court scenes and more things to do there's a few more then more cultists you can hunt down if you want to um, to be honest, the first couple of parts kind of bored me a bit, and then part three of that, it starts getting really bored, ramping up a bit. It also does a bit of a time skip as well to a couple of years in the future, and shows you a bit more of the meat and the story, and I like that part of it. So yeah, part three I really enjoyed, but unless you're interested in the Assassin's Creed thing, I won't really bother with it. Now, the main DLC is um, the Fate of Atlantis DLC, and that actually is really, really good. It starts off in Elysium, Elysium, I don't know how to pronounce it, basically like sort of like a Greek heaven. Uh, it's easily one of the most visually impressive parts of the game. You get the three parts and each part is a new semi-world sort of thing, it's like a world but like a smaller version. So you get Elysium which is very very pretty, it's all like Greek goddesses being assholes to each other and you have to uncover a plot. <laughs> To be honest, it looked prettiest, but by the end of that, I was glad to move on because everyone was just backstabbing everyone, and by the end, I didn't really care because everyone just pissed me off. The second one is my favourite one. It's kind of set in Hades, or whatever it's called, the, Sh the Shadow Realm. You actually meet Hades himself. That's not before you take out, take out Cerberus to actually get there. That is like a burning horror world, kind of reminding me of something out of Doom. Now that, I really did love that. You don't spend too much time there, to be honest, in comparison to Elysium, but I like that, because everyone is quite straight up, and just no one likes you, and everyone's an asshole, and I thought that was pretty straightforward, and likes it. Also, you get some really cool looking gear in there, you can kind of look like a demon slayer, so I like that part of it. Weirdly, part three is actually set in Atlantis itself, and I found that really disappointing. Um, it kind of just looked like another Greek area, 
which is good and everything. Uh, I just found the town very annoying to get around. It's like a big circular disc. And every time you wanted to get somewhere, it was always a pain in the ass. You had to climb up or down certain things. There's no straightforward, easy path to get to anywhere. And the storyline was a bit better on that. It kind of goes more into the Isu and humanity and how it all was and how they tried to live with each other before. Because basically, I think they're the, the weird spirity god things. You go, oh, we see Pepper throughout the story. It explains that a bit more. And they created us and this and the other. He, he delves really deep into the Assassin's Creed lore and gets a bit mental. So, to be honest, parts of it I understand. And it does kind of tie up a bit more the modern day storyline. It shows you a lot more of that. With, oh god, what's she called? I don't even like her. Nope, oh, I've completely forgotten the name. But anyway, it's the modern day stuff. Apparently she's carried over from Origins. Um... And I really didn't like that storyline at all. I wish they just completely cut it. It, it ends stupidly. I'm, the only thing I can say... She's called Hassan. I forgot her first name now, but... Layla Hassan? I think that might be the name. But yeah, she's kind of like been peppered for the last couple of games. Kind of building up like a new protagonist. Kind of like out of the first game. Desmond, where it keeps going back and forth. I think it's kind of build her into that. But I'm not sure if it's accidental or bad script writing or very clever script writing because she's supposed to be like the good guy protagonist sort of thing in the modern era but by the end of this I think she's done that many things that are dickish and wrong I'm starting to think maybe the gear and up has been a villain just play it you'll see what I mean or watch the clips on YouTube if you don't want to play 120 hours or whatever I just don't know how you can redeem the thing she's doing uh, and then being very blasé when you've accidentally done these things rather than like really apologetic and oh my god must fix this just seems really harsh and to, yeah maybe she's getting geared up as like the next big bad I hope so otherwise it's very b bad script writing so we'll see but yeah I can only say if you love RPGs or Assassin's Creed this game is absolutely amazing you just have to give it a go it's, it's gigantic there's so much to do in the world I mean it's just it's just an amazing game that you can throw tons of hours into. It's easy to traverse. You can turn yourself into like a powerhouse of a character and just be almost unkillable if you get yourself right. Don't worry about specking wrong. It doesn't matter. You get enough points. You can mess about. You can also reset the skill tree. Also, one more thing I do want to talk about that no one ever seems to really mention is I think it's absolutely hats off to Ubisoft to stick in with a game. Because people enjoy a live service game. They're updating stuff for nothing. So I'm quite happy. So what they've been doing, they've been adding quests on over the year sort of thing since release. And some of those quests are really, really good. The main part of it for me, though, was like the four mythical beasts which you can hunt down. You've got like a Cyclops, a bloody Minotaur. And that whole quest line finishes with you taking down Medusa. And that is a really good quest line and a really good good fight at the end. You have to be level 50 for it, though. Well, maybe I'm just crap at the game, but I really struggled trying to do it before 50. It's just a really good. It gets a bit more fantastical, but I love that part of it. And it's just, I really wish some people that just are into RPGs would give this game a go. Even if you don't care about the Assassin's Creed lore, just ignore it. It's a really good RPG. But also, another thing, Ubisoft, I tip my cap to them if I had a cap. The tours that they do. It's, I mean, it's like you could use it in schools and universities. It's like an educational tool that comes with the game. I think at the moment they're actually letting you download it for free on Uplay. But it strips out all the combat. You can just walk around the world... And it's got like little actual talk around tours going around. Talking about ancient Greece and rules and this, that and the other and what Citizens happened. And it's absolutely amazing. And the amount, sheer amount of content they've got in there. And it's good to play it after you've finished it. Because you can kind of understand a lot of what's been happening. That it didn't even mean anything. And you just run completely full pelt on a horse past these things. And then when you watch the tour and think, oh my god, I didn't realise that was actually going on. That's what that meeting meant. Or that was... It's, it's absolutely it's outstanding the amount of effort they put into this game. I mean, okay, yeah, some of the tours might go completely over your head if you're not interested in ancient Greece. But it's just an option there that's there on the main menu if you want it. And it's brilliant. I'm going to hopefully try see it when my daughter gets a bit older. Because obviously it's five months old now, so it makes no difference. See if I can actually teach her a bit of ancient Greece. Let her run around and learn a bit about stuff like that. Because it's just it's brilliant. Um, yeah, anything, I, I probably miss bits, but the game is that big. The voice acting is brilliant. I prefer the voice actor of Cassandra, she was amazing, she put a lot of emotion into it. 
I do have to say, there's actually quite a lot of funny bits in this game. You don't expect an Assassin's Creed game to actually be really funny, but there are actually some parts that really made me piss myself laughing. Especially just with... I can't really spoil it, but... You'll see, there's just a lot of one-liners, and it's just it's just silly in parts. I think it knows it's being ridiculous and just goes with it, and I just loved it. So yeah, hopefully guys, if you're interested in Assassin's Creed or RPGs, give it a go. It's absolutely brilliant. It's on sale now. I know they're probably going to do even more sales before the Viking one comes out in November, December, whenever it comes out. But you absolutely owe yourself a chance to look at this game. I loved every minute of it. Uh, yeah, hopefully guys, you enjoyed the video. It's been educational. Um... Yeah, let me know what you think below, and I shall see you next time. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, bye. He better fucking win. Come here. Gives us a hug. Surely he can swim. Well, looks like you're the champion now. I can't believe he's gone. Unprecedented. 